Hey there, this is Jen from Escapod, and we are back with a little more on the Tapo 2. It's a beautiful morning out here at Gooseberry Mesa, overlooking Zion National Park. We have been down here for a couple nights, just getting some mountain biking in and some final sunshine before winter really sets in. And just wanted to talk you through a little more of the Tapo 2 from an experiential standpoint. So it has been um, a few nights. We've made several meals now on this stove setup. It's a really comfortable height for cooking. Um, as you've seen before, we do have silverware underneath. Um, this has been a really handy, useful setup to not need to deal with um, reaching over the top to grab anything that you need while you're cooking. Um, the two burners, this is a larger stove than we have had in trailers in the past, and you can really comfortably fit um, not only a pot, but also a larger pan while you're cooking. Kind of give you a look at that quickly. And you'll also see more of a realistic look um, at how things fit in the galley, um, the, the real life mess <laughs> that occurs in the galley. Uh, we're still figuring out how we wanna set up bins and the best organization for back here. Um, but what I can say so far is that we've been really pleasantly surprised with the storage space in uh, the galley as well as in the cabin. Um, the other thing, I have been kind of on the in the anti-sink camp for a long time, and having a sink in this trailer has been so nice, uh, especially with having the water inside. It is, has fallen below freezing overnight every single night that we have been camping, and with the pump on, you just turn the faucet on and you have running water which is really a lovely thing to be able to do dishes, but also to grab a glass of drinking water if you want, or to fill a pot to cook as you are getting ready for mealtime. We also have the 75 liter Yeti cooler in here. Uh, this cooler is feels quite a bit larger than the 65 liter, even more than, than the 10 liters as the names would indicate. Um, plenty of food for several days. You can also do a 63 quart ARB um, fridge freezer if you prefer that route as well. And you know, like everything with teardrop trailers, there's pros and cons to everything when you're working in a small space, what do you wanna optimize? So we love the cooler, it works well for us, but some people do prefer a fridge, it's just gonna use a little bit more battery. Now, coming around the trailer, one thing that I haven't really talked about in depth before is that we do have a gravity fill uh, water tank in this trailer. So it is 20 gallons of usable water on board, but you can also just easily refill this with a jerry can or a water jug. Um, and the nice part about that, if you're camping somewhere like Gooseberry Mesa that is remote, you don't wanna take your whole uh, trailer down to refill the water. You can make a day trip down with your car, leave everything set up at camp, and then you just pour water in here and you can refill your water tank. Now inside the trailer, this is our first time camping with a heater. And I have to say, I am a true convert. It makes it so pleasant just crawling in at night after you leave the warmth of your campfire to crawl into a cozy, warm cabin, especially so if you have <laughs> toddlers like we do, um, it makes it really comfortable. As far as storage in here, there is way more storage for clothing and goods. Um, the wireless chargers that we have over on the nightstand have been really, really handy. Um, and then of course, all of your amenities and systems monitor. So we do have the, um, monitor going now you can see the life that is left on the batteries depending on what you're using so we do have the inverter switched on that doesn't really need to be on right now so we can turn that off and then you'll actually see um, this change live of course i'm messing with things here um, and the length that you'll have on your battery is just going to continue to rise as it's figuring out what is actually being drawn off the battery so interior lights, overhead, LEDs, um, super bright, provide a ton of light in here. There's been no issues with light at all. And then the other nice feature, we added these rock rail lights. These are ground lights on the frame. Um, that's been really nice at night to just leave those on if you're at the campfire and you can still make your way back to your trailer um, at the dark and kind of, in the dark and kind of see 
uh, your way back there. So again, now we're, we're still climbing up to two days here on the battery. Pretty cool to see. And then there's also tank levels um, on here. This is showing, as far as battery goes, this is showing the amps that are currently being pulled off that battery and then the current voltage of the battery. And if we continue toggling, this is our water tank level. So we have 17.4 gallons left in our water tank. Um, all of this is just really nice to be able to, to monitor, engage, and, and know where you're at, know when you really need to get that solar panel pointed toward the sun, um, or if you can sit pretty. As far as other things in here, um, the Stargazer window, I know you've seen before. Uh, we've been loving it, and this guy just slides open like so, and you tighten down here and on the other side to have that vented. We will have a standard screen and shade that comes with this trailer. It will be included, um, and this will be the primary method for cross ventilation in your trailer. And there's a ton of room here um, for Breeze to come in kind of at all different varying angles. And then headboard storage, of course, uh, we have always liked this as a spot for camp chairs. Camp chairs still fit in here great. And then there's even more room after that. So extra bedding, we have some pillows in there right now. I've got a blanket actually underneath this pillow. Um, it's a really deep storage compartment. You can fit a lot in there. It's also my son's favorite hiding place in the trailer. He loves crawling back there and hiding away. Now, as far as the mud room, um, you will see on this side, a really nice feature here with two hooks up top for hanging coats or bulkier articles of clothing, sweatshirts. This spot down here is really great to store your shoes and it just keeps some of the dirt outside of the cabin as you're getting in and gives you a nice little perch to sit and pull your shoes off before you're crawling into bed. Um, there is a true queen size bed in here. So it is 80 inches long by 60 inches wide. So regular queen size bedding works just fine. Um, six inch memory foam mattress in here that has been really comfortable. We've, we've probably had about a seven or eight nights on this mattress, still breaking it in a little bit um, and have been really happy with it. And then of course our go-to rumple two person blanket on top. Um, we've got cup holders. Simple yet lovely feature in the top O2. And then there's also additional storage underneath um, in the nightstand down here, which is great place to throw keys or glasses or your cell phone if you're not actively charging your phone. So pretty versatile spot there. Oh, I mentioned this earlier, but we do have wireless chargers um, in the top O2 and I'll, I'll show you that right now. So we'll pull off my case here. That's Nano. Our son calls dinosaurs Nano. Um, don't tell him it's actually a dragon. Anywho, um, X marks the spot. You just place your phone on here and it'll start charging. Pretty cool. We also have your standard USB outlets as well if you have other devices that you wanna charge that might not charge well on that wireless charger. Okay, let's go back outside and one thing I haven't spoken about yet in this video is the table that is convertible. So this will collapse down and then actually goes in front of the cupboard space in the galley that you saw earlier. Now, the really nice part about this table, um, especially in the Topo 2, it is a little bit deeper than on the original Topo. Um, the material that we use here is called HDPE and it is used a lot for cutting boards and that type of stuff. So this is actually a really great prep space if you're looking for an additional area to maybe chop and prep. In the original Topo, we often used this as kind of our dishwashing station, and so it never really occurred to us to use it as a prep station, um, but it's a really comfortable height to chop and prepare vegetables and foods as you're getting ready to cook in the galley. Now, right below the table, you will get a look at the standard wheel and tire setup, as well as the standard suspension setup for the Top O2. The free ride suspension is the standard suspension option on the Top O2, which is a really nice dampened suspension system. So it'll control both um, the absorption and the rebound when you're out on the road using a shock and spring. It provides a really smooth ride. 
and 23 inches of ground of ground clearance on this trailer so you're not going to have to worry about this getting hung up on anything if your car can get over it the trailer is going to have no problem okay so that brings us to the tongue box we'll take a look inside here there is so much space in this tongue box. It is really pretty incredible. I know in some of the in images, it looks a bit smaller than our current um, tongue box option on the original Topo, but because we were able to move things like the battery um, inside the mechanicals area in that utilities closet, it did allow even more space in here. So there's a few things that come standard in here. You will have your 11 pound propane tank as well as the L-Track that is along the back and the side here. So these have different anchors that you can move around into all these different mounting points and then using tie downs to strap things in here. So if you wanna bring a toolbox along, uh, we have a generator here, uh, which actually came in handy for us because we forgot to charge our pod <laughs> and needed to charge it while we were out on the road. So we were able to run this and charge our battery completely within about an hour. Um, there is also a rubber mat that comes standard in here. It is removable, so you can pull that out if you wanna clean out um, your tongue box. And then a few different things that we're keeping in here. Like I mentioned, the extension cord, if you are bringing a generator and you need to charge, that's gonna be something that's really popular. If you are opting to go with an air conditioner, you will wanna have a backup power source. Um, we also have a hose here to run um, the water away from the pod into a bucket or storage container to get rid of your gray water. Um, first aid kit, some games. We'll also put in uh, our outdoor mats that we'll have set up at camp, which can be really nice. It's just a woven mat that um, is a great spot to kind of take your shoes off as you're getting into the pod and still be able to keep your feet clean while you're doing so. This is on gas struts, so it does have a soft close and then it will guide you open and then stay open, of course, as you're seeing here. The tongue box also locks, so as you close this down and push this in, then you just grab your key and you can lock this shut and everything inside is nice and secure. All right, well, that is a wrap on this video and walkthrough of the Topo 2. If you have any more questions about this trailer or our company, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, if you wanna see this trailer in person, head on over to our website at escapod.us. You will find a link to our shop tours page and you can actually schedule a time to come in and take a tour of our manufacturing facility and see one of our trailers in person.